Welcome to GTC. I hope you realize this is not a concert. You have arrived at a developer's conference. There will be a lot of science described, algorithms, computer architecture, mathematics. <laughs> what we need are bigger GPUs. We need much, much bigger GPUs. Blackwell is not a chip. Blackwell is the name of a platform. Uh, people think we make GPUs, and, and we do, but GPUs don't look the way they used to. This is Hopper. This is Hopper. Hopper changed the world. This is Blackwell. It's OK, Hopper. <laughs> 208 billion transistors. And so, so you could see, you, it, it, I can see, there, there's a small line between two dies. This is the first time two dies have abutted like this together in such a way that the two, chip, the two dies think it's one chip. There's 10 terabytes of data between it, 10 terabytes per second. So that these two, these two sides of the Blackwell chip have no clue which side they're on. There's no memory locality issues, no cache issues. It's just one giant chip. And it goes into two types of systems. The first one is form-fit function compatible to Hopper. And so you slide on Hopper and you push in Blackwell. That's the reason why one of the challenges of ramping is going to be so efficient. There are installations of hoppers all over the world, and they could be, they could be you know, the same infrastructure, same design, the power, the electricity, the thermals, the software, identical, push it right back. And so this is a hopper version for the current HGX configuration. And this is what the, other, the second hopper looks like this. Now, this is a prototype board. This is, the, this is a fully functioning board, and I'll, I'll just be careful here. This right here is, I don't know, $10 billion. <laughs> the second one's five. It gets cheaper after that, so any customers in the audience, it's okay. <laughs> What's amazing is this computer is the first of its kind where this much computation, first of all, fits into this small of a place. Second, it's memory coherent. They feel like they're just one big happy family working on one application together. We created a processor for the generative AI era. And one of the most important parts of it is content token generation. We call it, this format is FP4. Well, that's a lot of computation. 5x, the gen token generation, 5x, the inference capability of Hopper seems like enough. But why stop there? The answer is it's not enough, and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why. And so we would like to have a bigger GPU, even bigger than this one. And so we decided to scale it. And notice, but first, let me just tell you how we've scaled. Over the course of the last eight years, we've increased computation by 1,000 times. Eight years, 1,000 times. Remember, back in the good old days of Moore's Law, it was 2x, well, 5x every, what, 10, 10x every five years. That's the easiest, easiest math. 10x every five years, 100 times every 10 years. 100 times every 10 years, at the, in the middle, in the heydays of the PC revolution. 100 times every 10 years. In the last eight years, we've gone 1,000 times. We have two more years to go. And so that puts it in perspective. The rate at which we're advancing computing is insane. And it's still not fast enough, so we built another chip. This chip is 
just an incredible chip. We call it the NVLink switch. It's 50 billion transistors. It's almost the size of Hopper all by itself. This switch chip has four NVLinks in it, each 1.8 terabytes per second, and, and it has computation in it, as I mentioned. What is this chip for? If we were to build such a chip, we can have every single GPU talk to every other GPU at full speed at the same time. Um, I want to thank, thank some partners that, that are joining us in this. Uh, AWS is gearing up for Blackwell. They're, uh, they're going to build the first uh, GPU with secure AI. They're uh, building out a 222 exaflops system. You know, just now when we animated uh, just now, the, the digital twin, if you saw the, the, all of those clusters are coming down. By the way, that is not just art. That is a digital twin of what we're building. That's how big it's going to be. Besides infrastructure, we're doing a lot of things together with AWS. We're CUDA accelerating SageMaker AI. We're CUDA accelerating Bedrock AI. Uh, Amazon Robotics is working with us uh, using um, NVIDIA Omniverse and Isaac Sim. Uh, AWS Health. Uh, has NVIDIA Health uh, integrated into it. So AWS has, has really leaned into accelerated computing. Uh, Google is gearing up for Blackwell. GCP already has A100s, H100s, T4s, L4s, a whole fleet of NVIDIA CUDA GPUs. And they recently announced the Gemma model that runs across all of it. Uh, we're wor working to optimize uh, and accelerate every aspect of GCP. We're accelerating Dataproc which for data processing, their data processing engine, JAX, XLA, Vertex AI, and Mujoko for robotics. So we're working with uh, Google and GCP across a whole bunch of initiatives. Uh, Oracle is gearing up for Blackwell. Oracle is a great partner of ours for NVIDIA DGX Cloud. And we're also working together to accelerate something that's really important to a lot of companies, Oracle Database. Microsoft is accelerating, and Microsoft is gearing up for Blackwell. Microsoft and NVIDIA has a wide-ranging partnership. We're accelerating, CUDA accelerating all kinds of services when you, when you chat, obviously, and uh, AI services that are in Microsoft Azure. Uh, it's very, very likely NVIDIA is in the back uh, doing the inference and the token generation. Uh, we built, they built the largest NVIDIA InfiniBand supercomputer, basically a digital twin of ours or a physical twin of ours. Uh, we're bringing the NVIDIA ecosystem to Azure. NVIDIA DGX Cloud to Azure. Uh, NVIDIA Omniverse is now hosted in Azure. NVIDIA Healthcare is in Azure. And all of it is deeply integrated and deeply connected with Microsoft Fabric. There's a whole bunch of other models, whole bunch of other models. Computer vision models, robotics models, and even, of course, some really, really terrific open source language models. These models are groundbreaking. However, it's hard for companies to use. How would you use it? How would you bring it into your company and integrate it into your workflow? How would you package it up and run it? Remember, earlier I just said that inference is an extraordinary computation problem. How would you do the optimization for each and every one of these models and put together the computing stack necessary to run that supercomputer so that you can run these models in your company? And so we have a great idea. We're going to invent a new way, an, invent a new way for you to receive and operate software. This software comes basically in a digital box. We call it a container. And we call it the NVIDIA Inference Microservice, a NIM. And I'll only explain to you what it is. A NIM, it's a pre-trained model, so it's pretty clever. And it is packaged and optimized to run across NVIDIA's install base, which is very, very large. What's inside it is incredible. You have all these pre-trained, state-of-the-art open source models. They could be open source. They could be from one of our partners. It could be created by us, like NVIDIA Moment. It is packaged up with all of its dependencies. So CUDA, the right version. CUDNN, the right version. TensorRT, LLM, distributing across the multiple GPUs. Trident Inference Server, all completely packaged together. It's optimized, depending on whether you have a single GPU, multi-GPU, or multi-node of GPUs, it's optimized for that. And it's connected up with APIs that are simple to use. These packages, incredible bodies of software, will be optimized and packaged, and we'll put it on a website, 
And you can download it. You could take it with you. You could run it in any cloud. You could run it in your own data center. You could run in workstations if it fit. And all you have to do is come to ai.nvidia.com. We call it NVIDIA Inference Microservice, but inside the company, we all call it NIMS. We have a service called NEMO Microservice that helps you curate the data, preparing the data so that you could teach this, onboard this AI. You fine tune them, and then you guardrail it. You can even evaluate the answer, evaluate its performance against um, other, other examples. We will do for you and the industry on AI what TSMC does for us building chips. And so we go to it with our, go to TSMC with our big ideas. Uh, they manufacture it and we take it with us. And so exactly the same thing here, AI Foundry, and the three pillars are the NIMS, Nemo Microservice, and DGX Cloud. We're announcing that NVIDIA AI Foundry is working with some of the world's great companies. SAP generates 87% of the world's global commerce. Basically, the world runs on SAP, we run on SAP. NVIDIA and SAP are building SAP Jewel co-pilots uh, using NVIDIA Nemo and DGX Cloud. Uh, ServiceNow, they run 85% 80, of the world's Fortune 500 companies run their people and customer service operations on ServiceNow. And they're using NVIDIA AI Foundry to build ServiceNow uh, Assist virtual assistants. Cohesity backs up the world's data. They're sitting on a gold mine of data. Hundreds of exabytes of data, over 10,000 companies. NVIDIA AI Foundry is working with them, helping them build their Gaia Generative AI Agent. Snowflake is a company that stores the world's uh, digital warehouse in the cloud and serves over 3 billion queries a day for 10,000 enterprise customers. Snowflake is working with NVIDIA AI Foundry to build co-pilots with NVIDIA Nemo and NIMS. NetApp, nearly half of the files in the world are stored on-prem on NetApp. NVIDIA AI Foundry is helping them uh, build chatbots and co-pilots like those vector databases and retrievers with NVIDIA Nemo and NIMS. And we have a great partnership with Dell. Everybody who, everybody who is building these chatbots and generative AI, when you're ready to run it, you're going to need an AI factory. And nobody is better at building end-to-end -end systems of very large scale for the enterprise than Dell. And so anybody, any company, every company will need to build AI factories. And it turns out that Michael is here. He's happy to take your order. The future of heavy industries starts as a digital twin. The AI agents helping robots, workers, and infrastructure navigate unpredictable events in complex industrial spaces will be built and evaluated first in sophisticated digital twins. All of the sensor data is created in simulation and passed to the real-time AI, running as NVIDIA Inference Microservices, or NIMS. And when the AI is ready to be deployed in the physical twin, the real warehouse, we connect Metropolis and Isaac NIMS to real sensors with the ability for continuous improvement of both the digital twin and the AI models. Once you connect everything together, it's insane how much productivity you can get. And it's just really, really wonderful. All of a sudden, everybody's operating on the same ground truth. You don't have to exchange data and convert data, make mistakes. Everybody is working on the same ground truth. From the design department to the art department, the architecture department, all the way to the engineering and even the marketing department. Today, we're announcing that Omniverse Cloud streams to the Vision Pro. It is very, very strange that you walk around virtual doors when I was getting out of that car, and everybody does it. It is really, really quite amazing. Vision Pro, connected to Omniverse, portals you into Omniverse. And because all of these CAD tools and all these different design tools are now integrated and connected to Omniverse, you can have this type of workflow, really incredible. We now have the necessary technology, and as I was describing earlier, the necessary technology to imagine generalized human robotics. This is NVIDIA Project Grid. A general purpose foundation model for humanoid robot learning. The group model takes multimodal instructions and past interactions as input 
and produces the next action for the robot to execute. We developed Isaac Lab, a robot learning application to train Groot on Omniverse Isaac Sim. And we scale out with Osmo, a new compute orchestration service that coordinates workflows across DGX systems for training and OVX systems for simulation. With these tools, we can train Groot in physically based simulation and transfer zero shock to the real world. All this incredible intelligence is powered by the new Jetson Thor robotics chips, designed for Groot, built for the future. With Isaac Lab, Osmo, and Groot, we're providing the building blocks for the next generation of AI-powered robotics. About the same size. The soul of NVIDIA. The intersection of computer graphics, physics, artificial intelligence. It all came to bear at this moment. The name of that project, General Robotics 003. I know, super good. Super good. Well, I think we have some special guests. Do we? Hey, guys. So I understand you guys are powered by Jetson. They're powered by Jetsons. Little Jetson robotics computers inside. They learn to walk in Isaac Sim. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this, this is orange, and this is the famous green. They are the BDX robots of Disney. Amazing Disney research. Come on, you guys, let's wrap up. Let's go. Thank you, have a great, have a great GTC. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.